Hey guys, welcome back to the Acne Channel. It's your girl Liz, aka Pretty Progress 23. Today's video is all about hormonal acne. But first of all, we need to understand what hormonal acne is and how it's different from your old fashioned just pimples in general. So as the name suggests, hormonal acne is intrinsically linked to your hormones. The fluctuations in your estrogen levels as well as your progesterone levels during your menstrual cycles play a huge factor in your acne flare ups. Now the ratio of these hormones also affect your testosterone levels. Hormonal acne isn't just to do with your periods and your menstruation, it's also to do with cortisol, which is a stress hormone that is released when you're overworking yourself or when you're feeling anxious or something in your life is bothering you. When these fluctuations happen with your hormones, it causes your oil glands to go into overdrive, making you more prone to breakouts. If you have excess sebum sitting on your face, it's more likely to mix with your dead skin cells, clog up your pores, and then have an infection, a greater outbreak on your skin. And so that is pretty much what hormonal acne is. Now, what are the signs of hormonal acne? Let's get right into it. Here are some of the signs of having hormonal acne. Number one, the telltale of hormonal acne is usually the location of where your pimples are. The face mapping is a real thing. It's a great guide. Now it's not 100% accurate, but it definitely gives you an idea. Hormonal acne is very prominent around the chin and around the jawline. I did it in the opposite direction. Hormonal acne is around the chin and the jawline. So those are the most prominent areas and it's quite inflamed. When your hormones are out of whack, it's increasing that excess sebum and the sebum is definitely around your chin area. While those are the most prominent areas, hormonal acne can also be around your neck. It can also go up around your cheek area as well. So just bear that in mind. I will do a proper face mapping video. I wholeheartedly believe in Chinese medicine, traditional medicine, and they also talk about face mapping and it gives you a very clear indication of internal imbalances within the body. And so remember, jawline and chin is an indication of hormonal acne. Two, your breakouts happen once a month. So this is whether it be before your period or during your period. And then after your period ends, your skin gets better. When it comes to hormonal acne, it looks like it's almost a pattern. So it, it becomes cyclical and this pretty much sucks. You feel like your breakouts are happening in the same areas, in the same spot and in the same inflamed area. And it feels like it's getting worse. It gets better and then it gets worse. It's like taking one step forward and then taking two steps backwards. And I get it, it's super, super frustrating, but don't worry, I'm gonna give you some tips at the end of this video. Number three, you're easily stressed. So if you're somebody who is overworking, you're picking up too many jobs, you feel like you're stretching out your responsibilities, you feel like you can't even take a long deep breath without feeling anxious, hormonal acne is something that you're struggling with because of your cortisol levels. So when your cortisol levels rise, these hormones are actually disrupting the other hormones that are regulating your oil production, your sebaceous glands. Okay, the last sign is your age. Now this isn't like a really clearly defined factor, but it might help you. So I know that when you're a teenager, you get puberty pimples and people will think you'll grow out of it. But crazily enough, a lot of people in their 20s actually have hormonal acne. This is the time where, you know, your body's preparing yourself to prepare for a child. So your hormones are actually fluctuating a lot. And so usually hormonal acne attacks you in your 20s, which is what happened to me. It was so tough. And age doesn't really define if you have acne or not because acne can come from a number of factors. But I mean, if you're in your 20s, you could kind of narrow it down and, and, and blame it on your hormones. <laughs> Let's get right into the tips. I've been talking a lot, a lot. And number one is actually eating nourishing foods. Your body cannot support your hormones and balance it if you're not giving it the proper building blocks. So when we're talking about nourishing foods we're talking about leafy greens we're talking about bone broth we're talking about healthy fats and proteins avocado is absolutely amazing now the reason why I talk about bone broth is because it helps your gut as well and if you build your gut microbiome it's going to help your body digest it's going to help your body just heal itself from inside and out I have a whole gut health video as well I always talk about that one definitely check that one out and I'm so sorry about the dogs in the background today barking for some reason and I hope they're okay. The next tip is number two is sleep. Making sure you sleep regularly. Now, I feel like not a lot of people place an importance on sleep, but if you are having irregular sleep or disrupted sleep, it affects your microbiome, it affects your gut, it affects your skin, your, your mood. It throws off your blood sugar balance and it just, it's like a rippling effect. 
So making sure that you rest, you know, stay one hour away from your phone before you sleep, making sure that you are having deep sleep because at night, that's when your body heals. If you're not having enough sleep, you're going to release those stress hormones as well, affect everything, as I said previously. So make sure you figure out ways that you're managing your hours throughout the day okay, and that you're not staying up late. Okay, the lighting changed a little bit <laughs> because it's almost night time, but the next one is supplementing wisely. So this really helps you. Now, my number one recommendation is actually Zilch. Now, Zilch is so, so helpful in detoxing your body. It heals your liver. Now, my particular case is that I had a estrogen dominance from the synthetic hormones of my birth control pills that I've been taking for five years and I've completely stopped now. And basically, Zilch really helps kind of help your liver function at its best because sometimes your liver actually needs help. It's not detoxing at its best. I also recommend like omega-3s. It's quite anti-inflammatory. I also recommend magnesium. It helps with your sleep. There are a lot of minerals that minerals where you're deficient because of the pill, but not just because of the pill, but because of your diet, because of your lifestyle. And so double check what you're deficient in with the doctors and go from there. But most of the supplements are actually really great. You can also think about probiotics to heal your gut because again, if you're stressing and it's impacting your microbiome, probiotics do help. Number four is avoiding caffeine and refined sugar. I think it's given that with caffeine, it dehydrates you. It doesn't really give you any nutritional value. It gives you this spike of adrenaline and then you crash with refined sugar as well. It's messing up your blood sugar levels. If your blood sugar level rises, you're gonna have a spike of insulin. And what insulin does is actually, again, making your oil glands go into overdrive. You want to avoid excess oils. <laughs> Number five is exercising regularly. Now we all know that when you're exercising, it helps improve your mood, your energy levels, but it also allows your heart to function better, your whole system. You're pretty much giving love to your body. So exercise doesn't have to be like jogging. If you hate jogging, it could be dancing, it could be yoga, it could be Pilates, it could be having a walk by the river. As long as you're exercising regularly, you're increasing that blood circulation. And when you're exercising, you're also regulating your insulin levels. So you want to regulate insul your insulin levels so your oil glands are regulated. Number six is my last tip, but it's equally as important as the tips above. It's to do with skincare. So skincare does amazing. It can only do so much. It doesn't. It might not get rid of your hormonal acne completely because obviously you need to focus on what's happening on the inside, but you can also treat it on the outside. So we're thinking about AHAs, glycolic acid, mandelic acid, lactic acid. I love those acids to help get rid of those dead skin cells and really get rid of that acne causing bacteria. And for maintenance, you can have vitamin C to brighten your skin, licorice root, those are incredible ingredients. And for skincare recommendations, just comment down below and I'll give you a list. And a personal opinion is if your hormones are out of whack, work with a health professional in terms of like an integrative holistic doctor and naturopath. You don't wanna opt for conventional medicine because often, the sad reality is that birth control pills, Spiro, Baracatane, they mask the problem. And once you're off it, what's gonna happen next? Or while you're on it, you're gonna experience all these side effects. And is it really worth it? Is it really healing your body if you're experiencing a number of issues on the side? I don't really think so. But again, that's my personal opinion and that's for you to decide because you know what's best for your body. I hope this video was helpful and big kisses. Mwah. Bye guys.